Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm going to do day 19 over because, you know, I listened to it when I came back home. I listened to it in the playback. It's trash. I don't like that. So we're doing a do over of day 19. You couldn't hear anything on that. The enemy is a liar. <laughs> the enemy is a liar. My words will be heard and will be told in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So it is currently 8.04. Y'all had to put this back on because I had them got out of this, honey. But anywho, y'all, go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on post notifications so you'll be notified every time I upload another video, video, video. And y'all can see me now, too. It's nighttime and it's much lighter. Earlier today, it just was not as much light in here, but it was sunny outside. Like, literally, it was hot outside. Okay. So what it was day 19 we are in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and it reads do not conform to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and what that means God is letting you know you can elevate in life okay he's letting you know you have the strength to change and to elevate in life but you are going to have to come back from the worldly world of things okay you're going to have to come back from the worldly world of things and know that God is God. Okay. So do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans chapter 12, verse two. All right. So do your reflection on it. Reflect on ways to detach emotionally from manipulative tactics. Consider how a renewed perspective can protect you from falling into these patterns. All right. And what I wrote, I said, when I reflected on it, I said, think about a hot summer day. I mean, one of those muggy hot days and you're like, it's too hot to come outside right now. But after the sun goes down, your thought process changes to, yeah, I'm going outside and enjoy the day and feel the cool breeze and relax. But every time you think about that hot, scorching sun, think about the hot, scorching sun on a sunny day at the beach. Or even at home, because baby, I know like in Florida, even here where we at, sometimes I'm telling you, and I get direct sun just beaming on my apartment. And it's like, you do not want to be in that sun. It be scorching hot. Just thinking about that hot, scorching sun, it just drains your energy. You have a low vibration. You don't want to be out there in that sun because it's so hot. Okay? So you have a low vibration and only being to think, I'm going to start. It's, it just drains your energy. You have low vib vibration and only begin to think, put this phone down, distraction. Think about what you're going to do after the sun goes down. It's the same way in a toxic relationship. They will resurface like a 360. It'll come up, sunrise, sunset, like a toxic relationship. We're talking about toxic relationships and detaching from manipulation tactics. So, they will circle around. These narcissists will circle around like a 360, okay? So that it will resurface just like the sun. But what are you going to do, okay? I'm comparing toxicity with the sun. Uh, So what are you going to do? Stay inside and hide till it goes away? No, you're going to protect yourself. You're going to protect yourself from them just like you would waking up and going out at a hot summer beach. With some sun protection. Protection as a prayer warrior. From like you're going out hot summer beach with sun. You're going to put on some sunscreen right to protect you so you don't get sunburn. With this narcissist, what you're going to do? You're a prayer warrior. You're going to be a prayer warrior. You're going to set your boundaries. You're going to validate yourself as y'all my mic i love it i love it this is what i was trying to tell y'all about my mic i got my new tiktok mic and the the sound is beautiful the sound is beautiful so i'm not doing this live i'm recording this um i'm not even recording in Streamyard because i don't know if it's the wi-fi or Streamyard. i don't know but i'm just recording gonna upload i'm trying not to make no mistakes okay so i can just upload and don't have to edit it 
All right, so you're going to be a prayer warrior, right? Prayer warrior. Put your praying on. Get your praying on. Get your praying on, okay? So the exercise after that, I was telling y'all in the other video, the live earlier today, I was telling you when I began to do my reflection, I when I first read this verse and heard it while I was journaling, the Holy Spirit came to me and brought this uh, method of this son and talks it relationships okay i literally have it written down you guys i have it written down sun toxic relationships okay so think about the sun the sun you're gonna put on sunscreen toxic relationship the armor of god's protection sun is hot toxic relationships you're frustrated Sun is heated. Toxic relationships come with isolation. You're stuck in the house. Sun, you want to go outside. Toxic relationships, you're inside because you're isolated. Sun, sunrise. Toxic relationships is like a sunset. Those are like freaking vampires. Like they drain all of your energy. So it's like a sun setting. Like when you with a narcissist, it's nothing is it's nothing you can do to make them happy. Like they some unhappy people. Okay. They are some fake unhappy people. All right. They just they ain't even beautiful. You know, the sunset is beautiful. Okay. Don't get me wrong. When I say sunset in the place of toxicity, I mean sunset to the point that the sun is going down and it's about to be dark. You're going to the darkness, okay, with narcissists, the principality of darkness. That's what I mean by that, with the sunset and then it get dark. Ugh, can't see nothing. Get away from it. But I thought uh, Holy Spirit is is just so, uh, <laughs> I don't know what word I want to use. Intriguing. The Holy Spirit is so intriguing. And I was just like, what? I couldn't believe that the Holy Spirit was talking to me like that. At the time it was coming to y'all, I done recorded this so many times because of complication with technology. But I was just like, God, you you know you right, Lord. You know you right. And then down at the bottom, I had wrote out um, like the snakes that was in my life. And, you know, that God, that God removed these snakes out of my life. I literally wrote their names down and things, you know, that I was talking about with God on there. Okay. So we are done with that. I am going to go ahead and do the uh, verse reflection. So the verse reflection is you write this verse down of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And then you're going to reflect on it. And while you're reflecting on it, what's going to come out? Your personal reflection is going to come out of there, okay? So do not conform to the pattern of this word will be transformed by the renewing of of your mind take advantage of what the blessings god is giving you and trying to show you okay you you've been kicked down you've been dirt dirt deep down in the mud you've been kicked over slapped used abused child talked about you don't went through all of it. it is time for you to rise my child it is time for us to rise and i am rising you understand it is time to rise in the mighty name of jesus rise my child rise okay so reflect on ways to emotionally detach from manipulative tactics and do, then do your personal reflection. Um, my personal reflection, I'm not going to go over it. I basically just told you it was about the snakes that was in my life. And it was three snakes in my life. Um, It was more than way back then. But recently, the recent three snakes in my life are out of my life. You know, they're out of my life. And I praise God. So reflect on a situation. Matter of fact, let me write that right here. Cause I didn't write it right here. I wrote it on the other paper, so it make me feel like I didn't do it. Um, the three snakes have been revealed, and God just wants you to see. He wants you to see. He wants you to understand that He put these people in your life only for a season, for that reason of time, for you to know what is and what is not. He wants you to see what is not of God. He wants you to see what it is that you do not need to have. That, that you don't need those type of people in your life. Okay. They're not adding on to your life. They're adding on problems. Okay. They're adding on problems. Hold on, y'all. Let me get some uh Oh, Jesus. I'm going to keep it going because I don't want to edit it. So, I'll be right back. That was quick. 
quick one. I did. I just went straight to the uh, hallway. <laughs> I went to the hallway, y'all, and grabbed the first thing. Little rag, I think. Okay, so you know, get those people out of your life and this chair. Uh oh, come on, chair. I be y'all don't be want to fall out of it, but get those people out of your life so you can see the blessings, so you can elevate and see the blessings and see what God have for you. You can't hear or see when you have toxicity in the way. When you got toxicity in relationships or in marriages, it is a blockage. It is a distraction. Okay. You already know who you are. You knew who you was before you got with them. Them people, them type of people feed off of you. You understand? Them people want to be like you, okay? Them people hate to see you living good, living righteous, praising Jesus, just doing the right thing. Like, they, these type of people are really sick in their head. Like, they really, they really need Jesus. So all you can do is pray for them because they really, they really got some serious mental psychotic psychopath stuff going on all right so you don't need them type of people in your life okay so reflect on a situation where emotional detachment could have protected you from falling into a manipulative pattern and when i say this is people will laugh at you but acting like they laughing with you and you laughing with them and not knowing that they laughing at you remember i talked about that in the other video but you don't realize it until God, you know, till you go through your journey or what you want to go through. And it's going it's gonna to be painful. Your journey is going to be painful. You know why it's going to be painful? Because you didn't pay attention. You just avoided all the red flags because you thought you could change somebody. You thought you can bring the better out in that person. You thought that you was the one to save that person. You got to lift your hands up off of these people. After you done tried and tried and tried, God is showing you, you don't have the power. I have the power. I said, pray, pray from a distance and let go and let God. I wanted you, God is telling you, I wanted to show you exactly who these people are. I want to show you exactly who these people are. So do your emotional detachment exercise. And I'm going to do the exercise with you guys. We're going to be practicing observing your emotional response without reacting immediately in a triggering situation. Reflect on how this practice impacts your control over emotional reactions. All right, so we're going to be doing healing from narcissist abuse, overcoming emotional triggers. Um, I'm going to link this down so you can get this worksheet. How I do, I'll leave a link in there. You guys can click on it uh, from my transform link. It will be down in the description and you can pull this up on your own time so you can have this worksheet to work from it. So understanding emotions identify emotions identify your emotions let's say overthinking thoughts overthinking thoughts about what let's say trauma bond because you're on your healing journey it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna pop up let's say loneliness Let's say just unhappy. So now that we identified those three emotion emotions, now it's time to understand those emotions. Reflect on the situations triggering these emotions. What triggered these emotions? Is it a song that probably played that you and this person probably used to listen to? Is it something in your home that remind you that y'all, when I say get that stuff out of your home, if you no longer with them people, anything, y'all, I'm telling you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When I say I'm replenishing everything in my home, literally the only thing that I probably have left in my home is, a, is the air fryer. The air fryer. And the air fryer, y'all, I can't throw it away until I get another one. But the air fryer is going to be gone and I'm going to get another one. And the reason why I say when you're not with these people, get rid of the things that they bought or you bought with them. Because it's going to help you on your handling journey. If you still have their clothes or their shoes or you have pictures. Um, I never was a picture-taking person, nor was he. So we ain't got to worry about that. Um, 
So, um, what I said, pictures or things that you bought, things that he left. You know, they will leave things and they don't even need it. You hear what I'm saying? They will have a whole wardrobe at their new supply home. So, if they leave anything there, get rid of that stuff. Get rid of that stuff. They don't need it. If they want they would have came and got it. They, they left it there because they want you to feel... They're playing on your mentality and they want you to feel some type of way every time you see it. And they want to give you false hope of, oh, they coming back to you. Nah, boo, you ain't coming back. <laughs> baby, you ain't coming back over here. You better tell the folks you're not coming back over here, baby. You don't discard it for the last time. We not playing with them games, okay? So if it's things that's in your home that's reminding you of that person, baby, have your yard sale. Give it away. Give it away for free. Donate it to Goodwill. Get it out your presence, okay? That's going to be a part of your healing journey because that could be something that's triggering you and reminding you of said events or said trauma, trauma time, okay? So that's how you identify those triggering emotions and reflect on the situations of those emotions, okay? And then what I want you to do, okay, I use overthinking thoughts, trauma bond, number one. Number two, loneliness. Number three, unhappiness. Then you're going to do an emotional scale from greatest to least. So let's say um, overthinking thoughts will be... Uh, the greatest from between your scale is going to be from one to 10 and you're going to least uh, list them like from one to 10 or from 10. I like to go from 10, nine, eight, seven, six going down, meaning 10 being the highest one being the lowest. So 10 will be overthinking thoughts going down in the middle will be sometime loneliness because you know, you're going to be missing that person, you know, especially if you have time invested, it takes time to get over having a companion or a spouse or, you know, so then I will put three is just not happy. Now those things are just examples, baby. I'm very, very happy. I am never lonely, honey. I'm always busy. I'm always doing something. But the overthinking thoughts and the trauma bond does occur. That's why I put that one at number 10, okay? Uh, so then you're going to... Okay, so emotional regulation strategy. So say you list these things, okay? And let's say you get triggered by these things. You have anxiety with the overthinking thoughts or you're just unhappy or the loneliness. Uh, work on some breathing techniques, okay? Do some mindful techniques, all right, mindful techniques, y'all. I just got a clock here, okay. I just got a clock came in. The clock has the ambient setting on here, honey. Do you hear me? It has ambient setting and it has different color lights, like this light, but it had different color light setting. I'll link this uh clock that I'm talking about in the description as well if you would like to purchase it. But it has ambient sound on that, and I love ambient sound. You hear me? It has the rain sound on that, too. My daughter had one, and then I got me one. I was going to give it to my son, but I'm like, mm, I started playing with it. I heard that ambient sound. I said, no, nah, I'll just get him the, uh, that black clock that I have. He a boy. He, his room got all black stuff in the way. He don't want no clock with all no covers. So, um... Yeah, I was listening to the ambient music, and I'm like, okay, now I ain't got to have my phone on. I got this clock on the side of my bed, and I can listen to my ambient music, and that is a way of how I do mindfulness. I do deep breathing exercises as well, and I meditate. Yes, I meditate. Um, Meditation in prayer, or sometimes just meditation and just deep breathing. And just becoming one with yourself, okay? Um, what else? Describe one mindfulness technique, which I just did. So I already did that for you guys. Cognitive re restructuring. Identify a negative thought pattern. So earlier I was telling you guys how I got a phone call from the school saying my son got kicked off the bus. Okay, then here come the negative, the negative patterns. All right, just I just woke up. It's you know it's eight o'clock. You know they leave out at seven thirty. It haven't even been a good hour. Get a call from the principal saying you're, you know he gonna be in ISS. He got kicked off the bus for a whole week. Okay, I get out the bed. I stump my toe. Okay, I'm headed to the bathroom. I'm just waking up. I ain't even sat on the edge of the bed to let the 
blood, you know, circulate through my body, all right? If you got high blood pressure, this is something that you need to do when you wake up. Now, my mama had told me this because I used to tell her I used to get up and I used to be dizzy and about to fall because I just wake up and just get out the bed and try to walk. And my mama said, try, you know, moving your feet, like get out the bed, slide your feet down. And just sit on the edge of the bed. Now, mind you, my mama told me this, but then the doctor told me that as well. So, I knew it was right. And then I started doing it. You know, I swing my feet out the bed and I would sit there for a while, you know, just to get get my head together. Because you just waking up and let the blood flow down, okay? So, to that dizziness pass by, excuse me. And then I get up and go to the bathroom. But I didn't do that that day that I got the phone call from the school. Boom, got up, hit my toe. Okay, literally hit my toe, y'all. It was hurting. And I'm like, oh, my God. It was just making me even mad. <laughs> I would just get even madder. Then I get in the bathroom. Here go my phone. My daughter writing long paragraphs of things that she need to do when she get out of school, where she got to go and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, my God. Y'all just left the house. Y'all haven't even been to school for an hour. And why I'm sitting on the toilet, excuse me, TMI, but why I'm sitting on the toilet, I'm like, I'm about to have a good day. I'm about to have a good day. You got to tell yourself. So that's where the cognitive reconstruction coming in it to, um, and challenging, what a minute, where I'm at, cognitive restructuring, identify negative thought pattern, challenge and reframe it with positive perspective perspective that's where the acceptance and commitment come in at because i accepted what was going on and in my mind i already knew how i was gonna handle it i'm like i'm gonna handle that little boy when he get here and that little girl whatever she needed she should have got it before she left this morning she needs to you know get her priorities together double check i'm not finna get up i'm not finna go nowhere mm -mm 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 -mm. okay so I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, I'm okay. I'm going to have a good day. Today is not going to be a bad day. After I did all that, you know, because the end, that's what the enemy wants. He will nitpick and do little things at you. If he can't get you, he'll work through your family members. He'll work through your children. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to be wise and not fall for the shenanigans. And, you know, I told myself, I am going to have a good day. I turned that negative frustration into positive, and I got up and grinded and did what I needed to do and went on about my day. If you weren't about to toast them, did it still hurt? It hurt it for a little bit, but it was over with. So think about things that are going on in your life that you allow to upset you all day. That's just like us in relationship with narcissists. And we're allowing them to make us feel depressed, have anxiety, anxiety, anxiety attacks, like depressed, sad, not, not living on, like we just lost everything. You are alive. You are okay. You can get another man, okay? You can get another man. You can get another girlfriend, okay? There are plenty of people in the world that... I know will be happy to be with you and be in a relationship with you or marry you or, you know, date you, etc. So we have to get out of that mentality when we break up or get divorces or move on in our life that it's the end of the world. And it's not, okay? Turn that negative into a positive. Of course, you're going to go through your course, okay? Like I used to tell y'all two years ago, I was boohoo crying and all that. But two years later, no, we're not doing that. We bossing up and we grinding and we doing what we need to do for us, okay? And we're going to hold people accountable, okay? We validating us. We're going to hold people accountable. We're going to make them stand on that crap, on that demonicness and that wickedness, what they did. We're going to make them stand on it, and they're going to own their karma, okay? And we're going to press on. We're going to pray for you from a distance. But we are going to accept and commit, Okay? That's what you got to do. Reprogram your mind. God had already told you in the verse of Romans. He had already told you, do not be conformed by the word. Okay. Renew your mind. All right. So values and clarifications list three core values. Connect each value to positive emotional well-being. The next one is committed action. Set a small goal aligning with your values. Plan actionable steps to achieve it. <coughs> and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my this weekend. I did a to-do list, right? 
I did a to-do list for Friday and Saturday, but I ended up picking up my little inventory and it pushed me to Sunday, which I was tired. But once I got it done, I was okay, okay? So the thing about making to-do list, like it said, plan actionable steps to achieve it. You don't wanna make a to-do list that you're not gonna be able to complete. You don't wanna make goal settings that you are not gonna be able to complete or stay committed to. Like, I'm gonna be committed to the things that I'm doing, okay? That's why I come up here, I post some on my community tab, or I give y'all an update, but just know I'm an entrepreneur. YouTube is not, I'm on YouTube now. I'm not on Facebook and I'm thinking about deleting my Facebook, but right now it's just there. I have three Facebook pages. Two of them are business page and one of them is linked to my YouTube page. But I'm not on, like I'm not focused on that content right, right now. Like when I stream, it goes to uh, my Facebook page. What I'm saying is when you're an entrepreneur, you got to schedule out like it can be overwhelming. You got to schedule out which platforms you're going to be on and grind on. You're not going to see elevation or increase or um, anything like heading towards your goal if you're not consistent. And it's hard to be consistent on all of the platforms when it's just you. So you got to set up some goal planning actions and you got to make them where you can be able to achieve them. Don't set them so high that you cannot achieve them. And that's what I did. I, I am focusing on both of my TikTok pages and my advertisement between Amazon and TikTok and my contract, okay? And then I'm starting up my Lemonade 8, okay? And between all of that, YouTube, I have this as where well. I create this. I'm going to finish this 48 devotional and I'm going to do some more on that as well. Okay. But some things going to have to hold out until I get the most important things. Okay. The most important things. You feel me? So, um, yeah, just, it, it's working out. I just had to tell y'all about me making a to-do list for Friday and Saturday. And then I'm like, Mm, my daughter was like, mom, you, you need to rest. I said, I've been having this headache and I had like a headache for a whole week. But that headache and my anxiety led up to something that I'm aware of now. Um, but yeah, you got to know when to rest and schedule and set your goals according to your standards. Now that to-do list, baby. Oh, I did it, baby. I grind this weekend. And guess what? Today is what? Tuesday and I feel good. Today is Tuesday and I feel good. Sometimes you're going to have to push. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. You're going to feel like you can't go on no more. But you're going to have to push and grind through it. You understand? And it's going to feel good when you complete it. We got to, we, we get too tired of like, oh, I'm tired. I can't do it. I need rest. I need to do this. I need to do that. Life ain't always going to be easy. Life ain't always going to be easy. And a lot of time to be able to achieve some things, you got to push through. You got to push through it. Okay. Now I understand if you have family that demise or things like that, you can't, you can't come back from that. You know, that's going to take a long time of healing. But this stuff, what we talking about, we got to get it together. Not when you done been through it so many times. Come on now, you're a G. You're a G in this. Okay. You can't keep crying over the same Negro. You can't keep crying over the same woman. That's doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. It's time for you to focus on you and boss up. Point blank, period. And that's what we doing. Long hair don't care. Mm. All right? So, I love you guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Because tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And I'm wishing you guys a happy Valentine's Day, honey. Like I was telling y'all, I got my tulips. Go look on my community page, girl. I got my tulips, but today I put them in the raised bed that's outside. I took them out of the vertical raised bed, and I put them in the raised bed. I don't know what they call that thing, but I put them in an actual raised bed, which you know an actual raised bed is, but this one is on wheels, and I put the tulips in it. Because earlier today, the sun was just beaming. I'm like, Lord, okay, they outside. They were they supposed to be outside. But this is their first time going outside. So, you know, you got to introduce them to the outside. 
So I know what I'm going to do. I need to get something to shield like the shade on my porch or whatever. Or I may just move them to the backyard when the sun, because the sun beams so dang on high when it's getting ready to set. Like it, it's like it be on blast. And my little tulips, baby, they like this. <laughs> my tulips like this just hanging, y'all. So, yeah, do what makes you happy, honey. I am happy. I am blessed. I'm, your girl is doing good. She look good. She smell good. She feel good. And it's only up from here. I'm going to keep on going up to, to our, uh, see, see God and be with the glory. Be the glory of the Lord. You hear me? So, I will see y'all in the next one. We are halfway done. I would go ahead and do day 20, but I'm not. I need to journal. I have to journal first before I come on here and do the video, y'all. Uh, but, yeah, I love you guys. You can do it. You're going to be all right. Boy, you're going to be all right. Girl, you're going to be all right. It's life. It's life. We go through it. We go through it, y'all. Everybody ain't meant to be together. That's what you got to realize. When it run its course, it run its course. And once you get over that hurdle, you're going to feel so good. You're going to feel so good. You're going to know that you're free. You are free. And I'm free. And I love it. And I'm going to stay free. <laughs> I'm going to stay free. I'm going to stay free, y'all. I was just telling my daughter. I said, baby, I got to give me a valentine. I want to give me a little boo, 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 boo. But, baby, if a man can't talk what I'm doing, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. Mm -mm -mm. I'm working on me. Heal, 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 and love on me. And it feels good. Got time to bring nobody in my corner. So make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on post notifications so you'll be notified every time your girl upload another video. And happy Valentine's Day again. Go buy you some flowers. Go buy you one of those heart, uh, heart uh, cookie cookie cakes okay do something for you don't always be looking to receive you got to understand how to take care of yourself for a chance okay buy yourself nice things do nice things for yourself all right and that's what i'm doing and i'm loving it oh, so i'll see you guys later toodles peace you guys shalom